Last time on MJ Sailing, we wrapped up the last of our transatlantic crossing where we saw some amazing sea life along the way. Tested out our 40 year old drifter for the first time. And after 2,800 miles and 25 full days at sea, made landfall in Horda on Fayal Azores. Our first day in Horda was a bit of a blur as our schedule was clean the boat, clean ourselves, and then catch up on some much needed sleep. When we were ready to hit the town for the night, we found there was a festival going on at one of the main squares, a common occurrence in the summer months on these islands. First night on land. Woo! They threw a party for us. Amazing. You can usually find stages for music and food booths set up every weekend. With our friends from Calico Skies reunited at our sides, we went out for an evening of live bands, snacks, and one euro beers and sangrias. Portugal. Prices are really affordable for things, um, things that we use all the time too. It's not you know, oddball things that you get. Uh, so, veggies, broccoli, uh, 74 cents for eh, about a quarter kilo. Carrot, 18 cents. Green pepper, uh, 77 cents for two big heads of green pepper. Heads? Heads? No, they're just peppers. Just peppers. Yeah. Zucchini, uh, what was that, 64 cents. That's a two big one. Two big one. Yeah, just crazy. So things are really affordable. Um, and you can still get the things that we're used to, a lot of the stuff. Um, uh, just, you know, one of the benefits of being here is the fact that it, it, it's closer to what we're used to in the U.S. Um, a, a lot of parts of the Caribbean, you kind of made do with what they had. Um, and try different things with this. It's what we eat on a daily basis is what the kind of stuff that they eat as well, of course. Plus a few um, new things to try out. That's one of the benefits is not with saying about things being uh, kind of like cheaper or more affordable here and being able to find things that we want. Because we can actually, and you'll be happy about to start eating healthier meals. All of those vegetables we got today are going to go into a veggie pasta tonight, just like a nice olive oil sauce. 
Um, it's because I'm 36 years old now, so I'm old and I need to take better care of myself. Matt's getting old and he yeah. needs to take better care of himself. I'm not too far behind though. Uh, so it is nice that we can go out and a lot of times you'll find this where you go is like the junk food, the bad food is cheaper. So that's kind of like what we gravitated to because that's really all that was in our budget. But here in Portugal we can buy all the fresh things to make the healthy meals and it is more affordable than it would be back in the US. So, Pretty sad that we only get a few weeks here. We keep saying if we could winter over here, we would. Um, it's probably gonna break our budget a little bit, Ireland and UK, but you know, we gotta follow our dreams, and our dreams are in Norway, so we gotta get up there. So, making a mess today, um, trying to fix our floor. Uh, this is the one board, it's a hatch cover for over the fuel system, the one board that's actually kind of warped. Um, I think there was too much pressure on the side when it expanded, the top part expanded slightly. Um, put pressure on the side and actually buckled the middle of it is, is what I'm guessing right now. Um, so to fix it, just going to slice relief uh, pieces in here with the little circular saw. Got a couple of those and then use a bar to pull it straight and then epoxy it back together and hopefully it should be good. So we'll see how it turns out. Unfortunately, uh, there was a little bit more spring back um, when I released the clamps than what I anticipated. Thought I was actually going to lay flat. So, get to cut it again. Not a big deal, just again, I'll just slice in here a few more times with the circular saw, bend it straight, and then uh, epoxy again. But, like always, we like to do things at least twice. Second or third time is the time. Yep. Get a few more shots before we get it. out of the west in these areas has shifted north and so the will be at about Well, that's not going to work. Let me give you the gist of what the wind wasn't letting me get out. We love the town of Horta, but being here in the height of their cruising season means no open slips for us and being tethered to the cement wall in front of reception. And when that gets full, boats are rafted up two to three, sometimes four deep. The past few days have been extra bumpy here, with the harbor entrance being exposed to 20 to 25 knot winds. This leaves us knocking against the cement wall, which is usually just an uncomfortable inconvenience. But when other, bigger boats come and raft up next to us, then it becomes a problem. The other day we had a Bavaria 44 on the outside of us, which would push with a little extra force into the cement wall. But soon, we had an even bigger problem. We were awoken at sunrise to loud crashes against the hull, and Matt went out to see what the commotion was. A 49-foot boat was in the process of rafting itself up to the Bavaria, and the incoming winds were pinning all of us to the dock. As wind and current were fighting each other, we would momentarily be pulled out from the wall and then smashed back into it, many times. Getting out on deck, Matt worked with the other boats to borrow a few extra fenders to soften the blow, but some damage was already done. When inspecting our starboard side later, we found a nice big crack in the tow rail. Something we'll now have to address the next time we haul out. Since then, the other boats have left, and we've invested in a few very expensive fenders, but we're starting to wonder if our stay here will be cut down if the winds don't start to shift or die off. to 
tell everyone where we're going. Oh my gosh, your shirt matches that. We're like, actually, no, the shutters. Shutters? Yeah. yeah. It's meant to like be. Like your chameleon. It is. <laughs> uh, what are we going? Porto Prim. Pim. Pim. Porto is. Porto Pim. Yes, it's a little harbor. Uh, a pretty little spot. We actually thought about it before of anchoring there. And it wouldn't be bad right now since the wind's out of the north and it's on the south side of the island. Uh, there's a volcano, extinct volcano on the one side. Uh, and then, yeah, just this beautiful little area. Just fell in the water there last time and ruined our camera. Uh -huh. um, and a pair of pants, right? It was so, a dress. Oh, it was a dress. Okay, so that's nice memories. Yeah. <laughs> it was Jessica's 33rd birthday? Second. 32nd birthday that we celebrated there last time. And now we are out of the wind and it is hot and I'm starting to regret wearing pants but I, I can kind of feel a breeze like rolling through the streets so I'm hoping that once we get back out to the waterfront here that uh, there is a bigger breeze because pants are a bad idea. Looks like the, told you so, told you so, told you so, told you so. Told you, told you, told you so. Yeah, there are people in the water. Where those people are laying out by like the old castle I walked down down to those slippery rocks for a good photo of course. And, and then took switched. the camera with her. I had the camera with me. I learned my lesson. So this is the local beach of Horda. Um, might still be a little cold for us. We're kind of babies now after being in the Caribbean for a few years. Um, but yeah, they've got like a nice little beach here, some restaurants right on the water. And it looks like this is where everyone's coming to hang out and cool off and just chill for the afternoon. It's like they have a marker for the Amazing Race right there. Maybe the Amazing Race came to Florida. Is that what they look like? Uh huh. Oh. Little red, red and yellow marks. It really could be. Yeah, there's another one right there. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> So this is actually the spot that we came four years ago for my birthday and as you can tell the views here are amazing which is why we chose this spot and it was a little disappointing on two ends. I came here hoping to have a caprajina or something. I think that's like a traditional Brazilian Portuguese drink. They didn't have it and then we found out once we got our food that it was basically the same stuff from the grocery store that we had just like slapped together sandwiches. So if you do find yourself here, come here for a drink, cheese platter, I wouldn't recommend getting a meal. Situated inside Porto Pim is the San Sebastian Fort, one of the oldest remaining on the island. It is believed to have been built in the 17th century, in the time of Spanish rule, to control the approach of vessels from the south side of the island. We thought it would be a good idea to get Georgie on shore to stretch her legs. She seemed to like the fresh air and the grass, but after only seeing the two of us for the past month, she was quite skittish about the loud noises and other people milling about. George Cat. 
good girl. Good girl. There you go. Very good girl. <laughs> now you can jump on board. We are off to the famous Pete's Pub. One of the biggest cruiser gathering points in the world, I think. Yeah, I would think so. It's probably one of the biggest. Because you yeah. get all these people come together, both from Europe and uh, from North America on the way back. Um, from Northern Europe coming down or from Southern coming forward. Uh, all end up usually in here in Horta. So, kind of cool place been around for a hundred years now they're celebrating the hundredth anniversary and centennial yep so we're gonna go celebrate we're with them drink. Jess is gonna try a Azorian beer if they have it I yep. hope they do Yeah, it's better just to pick one and uh, that way at least you know you get 12 <laughs> ounces or whatever it equates to. <laughs> so you have the regular gin and tonic it looks like. Yeah, it's good. Alright, let me try the margarita one then. So, if everything was in Portuguese, um, I, I know it's like a gin and tonic with maybe a margarita flair. It's a little darker, whatever it is. Mm, but it is sweet, fizzy, like and delicious. Ice tea or something else? It's, it's like a Long Island. I don't know. Let me try this one too. <laughs> this one's like lighter. This one's sweeter. I don't know. I'm just gonna take a bite. <laughs> Bite you over them. Uh huh. We'll flip. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. Join us for the next episode of MJ Sailing, 
where we take a trip over to the neighboring island of Pico. Covered in vineyards and housing Portugal's highest point, we see just how much of this island we can explore in 24 hours with our good friends Bill and Grace by our sides. Ooh! Flashing every one of my goods. <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> Super windy. The boat's pushing us into the wall. All right. All right. Heads, I get this. Okay. There are those. Oh, you're still filming? <laughs> what I get? Heads. Okay, so I get this. Okay. <laughs> so nothing changes. Nope. <laughs> 